Give it up for all the comedians. The show's over. The show's over. Thank you for coming to Clint Street Theater of our showing of Sicario, Day of Soldado. I heard the theater man. There's a lot of people here tonight. Give it up for yourselves for being here. There's a lot of people. It's not packed. It's not packed. I did see the theater manager come around the back. He's like, mm, I could have showed Hotel Transylvania 3 tonight and made more money, but that's okay. We're here, all right? We're gonna do it. I don't like theaters at all anyway. I don't like, because I saw the demographic of people coming in here, mostly 18 to 35 year old white guys. I don't want to get shot by some dude who thought this was like a rescreening of the Dark Knight, okay? I don't want to be your Joker victim. I'm the funny guy now. It's not gonna be me. It is good to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I feel good, man. I feel like the hometown boy doing the show here tonight for you guys. Portland's hometown boy. That's how I feel. I always wanted to be the hometown boy, right? They're always so cool. They seem so cool. They're like walking through downtown. They know everybody's name. I always wanted to be that, you know? They're like walking through downtown. They're like, hey, Marco, hey, how you doing, man? Hey, you looking big? You working out? Yeah, you doing MMA? Oh, man, yeah, I'm gonna fight you next week. Hey, uh, you just to say anything about me? <laughs> what do you mean she step toss text? Stop texting. She's crazy. Okay, do 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 do. Hometown boy. Okay, who else is here? Okay. Oh, hey, hello, Mrs. Johnson. Hey, I didn't see you crouching there. You're like a little Russian doll over there. Uh, hey, Mrs. Johnson, how about this? How about next week you uh, make me one of your famous banana cream pies? What do you mean I owe you 20 bucks? You're crazy. Okay, everyone's crazy but me. Okay, do 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 do. Okay, okay. Oh, hey, Melissa. Hey, how you doing? Hey, I was just talking to your brother. Hey, how about you let me take you out next week? Come on, let me take you out next week. Hey, where you going? You gonna make me run after you? <sighs> Can't run. Been vaping too much kiwi menthol e juice. <laughs> the hometown boy. So I, that's kind of how I feel tonight. I I knew that no one here would like that, and I needed to do it in front of a big audience. I talk through that whole thing because I know that if I'm talking, I can't hear nobody laughing at it. That's why I do it. That's why I do everything. So I do what I do. They have uh, gender neutral bathrooms here. Do you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah, which is, uh, I like it, man. I, there's more in Portland, like, every day, it seems like, which is good, because it's, like, more inclusive for everybody. But uh, here's the thing, I noticed that some places, they do it in the wrong way. Like, I was at a coffee shop the other day, and they had this weird sign on their bathroom door. The sign had a symbol of a man on it, and then next to that, it had a symbol of a woman. But then next to that, it was a symbol of an alien. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then underneath it said, whatever, just wash your hands. Like, that was a sign that they put up. Which, I guess, on one level, I get it. They're just being like, hey, the bathroom's for everybody, and that's nice. But, like, doesn't it also make it seem like the guy who put up that sign, like, maybe thinks trans people are aliens? <laughs> right? Like, okay, he's a good guy. He just has this one weird theory that doesn't make sense to anybody. Like, okay, I just imagine this scenario. Like, I imagine, like, a trans person's being harassed at his coffee shop, and he goes up, and he's like, hey, what's going on? Are you harassing this person? Listen, this is my coffee shop. We don't discriminate. Get the fuck out of here. And then they leave. And the trans person is like, hey, thanks for saying something. And the guy's just like, yeah, no problem, no problem, no problem. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Listen, you might not be from this planet, but <laughs> you don't deserve to be treated no different than anybody else. And <laughs> the trans person's like, what are you talking about? He's like, don't worry about it, okay? Just wash your fucking hands, all right? That's my one rule. At Joe's Coffee Shop, I don't care what galaxy you're from. I don't want intergalactic goop and grime on my blueberry scones. Do I only do one accent? Yeah, I do one offensive Guido accent because I'm good at it and I don't like Italians. That's the reason that I do it. I don't like Italians. <laughs> That's all I prepared up until I don't like Italians and then just no words after that. Just quietly pace the stage. I don't like them. <laughs> Never did. <laughs> I don't know, man. I am trying to be like, okay, is anyone else having this? Like my friend the other day, she was telling me that she doesn't like going downtown anymore because like homeless guys apparently will just like pop out in front of her and then they like whip out their dick and they just start peeing in front of her. Is that happening to anybody else? She said it's like a common problem. She was like, yeah, it's gross. I don't know why they do it. And I was like, that's super gross. But here's the thing, like I think I kind of know why they do it. Like here's my theory. I think it's like a form of public masturbation. Cause like if you just publicly masturbate, like you'll get called, like, the cops will get called on you. But if you just like whip out your dick and start peeing in front of somebody, it's much less likely, right? Is this tracking with anyone here in this room right now? Okay, somebody said yes. And I'm, I'm gonna really latch onto you for the rest of this because if this doesn't go well, okay, it's me and you now for the rest of this. 
it made sense to my friend. My friend was like, that makes perfect sense. Like, why didn't I think of that? And I was like, yeah, I don't know. But it's like, I felt like a creep. I was like, why did I think of that? You know, like, why, like, why am I so in tune with what these guys are thinking? Like, that made me, sh like, you know how they have those, like, uh, cop dramas where they get, like, a serial killer and he helps the cops catch worse serial killers? Like Hannibal? If they made a show about me, I would just play, like, a public masturbator that helps the cops catch worse public masturbators. Like, the cops are on the scene. I'm like, move away, boys. Okay, what would I do if I were the... <laughs> what did this sick freak want out of this? And my head's like warping into his brain, you know what I mean? I'm just like, okay, I don't know if they teach you boys in this in the police academy, but come close to the west. He went that way. And they're just like, thanks, Bader. I'm like, no problem, just do it. I'm like out of breath. <laughs> right? But I don't know, that's just the, maybe he's not even that bad of a guy. Like maybe he did publicly masturbate, but like it was for a good reason. Like, okay, stay with me on this. And you're with me on this. You have to be with me. Like, maybe there was, like, a hostage situation, like a bank robbery, and one of the bank robbers was like, all right, everybody, I'm gonna shoot this kid unless one of you other hostages jerks off in front of everybody. And then, like, everybody's just like, whoa, no way, kill that kid, okay? I'm not getting in trouble for this. But then, like, I come out from the behind everybody. I'm like, okay, I'll do it. Don't kill that kid, you know? And then I just have to be like, I'm sorry, kid, but you know I'm saving your life right now. You'll thank me one day later for this. I promise. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to be a better person. Like, uh, I, like I, here's what I realized. Like, you have to have like role models to be a better person. Like, one of my role models that I have is uh, Malala. Do you guys know who she is? Yeah. Like, she's pretty amazing, man. She, I really look up to her. She like won the Nobel Peace Prize when she was 17, and she like goes around the world talking about women's education. Like, she's amazing. But like, she's also I, here's what I realized. She's like one of those people. She's like too perfect, you know. Like, if you met her in real life, you wouldn't even be able to relate to her. Like, I can never be friends with Malala, right? Could you guys? No, she's like too perfect, right? Like, could you imagine being roommates with Malala? You would just feel bad about yourself all the time. Like, you walk into the kitchen hungover on a Saturday, you're like, oh God, Malala, I drank so much last night. I blacked out. Did you end up coming out to that party? And you know, she's just like tapping away on her laptop. She's like, you know, I was kind of too tired to party because I was working on that speech for the UN. So, you're just like, oh yeah, you're still working on that? That's cool. <laughs> I thought you were done with that, you know? Like, you know what I mean? Like, she's like a passive aggressive roommate too. She's like, uh, hey, did you remember to pay the internet bill? And you're like, yeah, I think I paid it. And she's like, actually you didn't. And uh, also, have you been eating my almonds? Because the bag is lower, I noticed. <laughs> and you're just like, yeah, I thought those were for everyone, but. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, she's not relatable, is all I'm saying. Like, she's great, but, like, you can't talk to Malala about your problems. Malala doesn't give a shit about your problems. You're just like, oh, God, Malala, I had the worst day today. I dropped my iPhone, and the screen cracked on my iPhone. Can you believe that? And she's just like, wow, yeah, that does sound pretty hard. That reminds me of a hard time that I had in my life. <laughs> when the Taliban tried to assassinate me. <laughs> and remember they did, they shot me in the head, but I just knew that I had to persevere and I got through it and I got through it, remember? And I'm still standing in front of you here today, can you believe it? You just have to be like, thanks Malala, thanks for the perspective. <laughs> and like your friends don't get it, you know? Your friend's like, oh my God, you live with Malala? You're so lucky, she's such an amazing person. You're just like, I don't know, man, like. <laughs> Honestly, like, Malala's kind of a bitch sometimes. They're like, what? What did you say about sweet, sweet Malala? You're like, I didn't mean it like that, you know? But it is what it is. Like, you gotta backtrack out of it. I don't know if you guys saw that. Did you guys see this in the news? They released all the files that were on Osama bin Laden's computer. Did you guys see that? Yeah, they did. Sorry I'm doing so much terrorism stuff, by the way. But... <laughs> Yeah, when they uh, raided his compound, they took his computer, they put all the files on their website. It's pretty crazy. Like, here's the weird part. He just had, like, a bunch of movies that he had downloaded onto his computer, right? And, like, I don't know if he paid for them or not, all right? Like, I don't... Like, I don't want to accuse him of being, like, a movie pirate on top of everything else. Like, I don't think that's fair to him. Just because you're a terrorist doesn't mean you terrorize the film industry, you know? Uh, I'm just gonna tell you guys my three favorite movies that were on Osama Bin Laden's computer. And these are true, you can look these up. It's 100% true, all right? Uh, these are true. So number one, uh, Ants. The animated movie Ants was on there. 
And yeah, no Bugs Life, so that kind of tells you what kind of guy he was, I think. <laughs> He's a good judge of character. Uh, next one after that, uh, Cars was on there. <laughs> I guess he's a big Owen Wilson fan, and the last one's funny to me, but it's never funny to anybody because they don't. No one knows what it is. It's a Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. Oh my God, there's a lot of claps. Just didn't realize I was performing in front of a white Al Qaeda tonight. I am gonna get shot. I know I'm gonna get shot in the show. I knew when I walked in, I was like, somebody's gonna shoot me. I know that I'm gonna get shot in this. And it won't even be like, wow, he was so prolific. He's like, remember that thing that he did about uh, that Italian voice that he said he didn't like Italians? That's gonna be on my gravestone. <laughs> didn't like Italians. Anyway, those are, those are the three movies that he had. And here's the thing, like, I don't need to say this, all right? Like, I think we can all agree in this theater here tonight. Like, obviously, Osama Bin Laden, horrible person. You know, you know, terrorism is terrible. And it's good that he's dead. I think we can all easily agree. Like, I don't even need to say that, right? Um, but... But, all right, here's the thing. I think we could also all agree in this room here tonight, Clint Street Theater. Like, you could have a pretty chill Sunday afternoon watching movies with Osama Bin Laden, right? Like, like that wouldn't be the worst Sunday of your life, right? Like, I just imagine, like, you're sitting on the couch with him, and you finish watching Cars, and he looks at you, and he's like, you wanna watch Cars 2, or you're just like, yes, put it on, why isn't it on now? Don't, don't ask, just do it. I'm just saying, he's a guy you could hang out with, that's all I'm saying. I mean, I know that sounds, if I'm being honest, I'd probably rather hang out with Osama than I would with Malala, which I know that sounds bad. It's just how I feel. That's how I feel right now. This is, um, uh, this is a very attractive audience here tonight. Um, I say that all the time, but you know, <laughs> you're as attractive as me. That's what I've realized. Like I am gonna, for the rest of my life, just be performing in front of people that are as attractive as me. I'm never gonna be able to date up based on, it's just, we're all the same. I can't, okay, I shouldn't have said that part, but you guys, uh, well, you want me to lie to you? You want me to, you want me to, you want me to tell you that you're hotter than me? You're not. <laughs> You're not, and you won't be. You're never gonna be. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm learning as an adult, you have to be attractive. You do have to be attractive. You have to be, because I don't, like I was working on my personality for four years. Don't do that, that's a mistake. That's a huge mistake. You do have to be, you 100% have to be attractive. They lie to you when you're a kid. When you're a kid, they're like, don't worry, looks don't matter. But then you grow up and those same people are like, not, I mean, they do matter a lot, actually. Like, I don't know. Why would you listen? What are you, ugly and stupid? Why would you listen to me, idiot? That being said, I'm also learning, like, you gotta work with what you got. Like, you get one body, you gotta work with what you got. Like, I'll tell you guys one personal thing about me. Like, I'll tell you guys, okay, I'll, like, you gotta, you, I'll tell you guys one thing about my dick, all right? Uh, I'll be honest with you guys, all right? I'll be honest, I'll move on after this, but I, I don't have the best penis in the world. Uh, I don't have the nicest penis, and I don't have the coolest looking penis in the world. All right, Portland. But one thing I will say about my dick that nobody else has I will tell you, I do, uh, I do have the, I have the widest urethra you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> you guys know what the urethra is? It's the dick hole. I have a huge dick hole. My dick is mostly the hole. If I'm being honest, it's like 99.9% .9 empty black space of the hole. And then the other 1% is like a thin skin sock on the outside. If you put a flashlight underneath my dick, you can see the other side. It's like the outside of a Vietnamese salad roll. <laughs> Just the rice paper. When it gets erect, it's like one of those dancing guys in front of a car dealership. And you just buy it, and then it just floats off. I, I can't even have sex, because my dick just blows. I have to catch my dick every time. No, I don't have that. That's a, obviously, that's a joke. That's not true. Please, don't come up to me after the show and be like, I, me, I also have that. I, I don't have that. But, okay, I will, oh, this, is a, this is a true thing about my penis. I do have an uncircumcised penis. Which, uh, and like, I don't know if anyone else here has an uncircumcised penis, but it's fine, all right. That's, it's too late now, but it's fine. It's just me, that's fine, just me. I am looking at a lot of men in their eyes right now, and they're telling me something different, so that's okay. I can see your beady little eyes, like, open in the darkness. Like the cat in Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> I can see you. 
And like the only reason I bring it up because like some I I've just heard some women they're like listen like you have to like if you're uncircumcised that's fine but you have to tell me before I see it. That's like the rule. <laughs> Which like I never understood that, you know. I don't like why should I have to say anything? My dick's uncircumcised, you know? Like you guys know what that word means, right? You know what that prefix un means? It means nothing's happened to my dick. It's on default. That's just the way they come. Why should I have to say anything? I shouldn't. You know who should have to say something? Circumcised dudes. Something happened to your dick, you should have to tell people about it. You guys are the ones that had a grown adult doctor look at your little baby penis and he was this close to it. He was just like, you know, it's good, but... He's like sweating over it. He's, like, he's, like, he's sweating on your little penis. It's good, but... I just think it would look better if I took a little bit off the top. And, and your mom was like, okay, hold on, hold on. Uh, wait, before you do that, I, I have to ask, are there any medical benefits? And your doctor was like, that's a great question. Thank you for asking. <laughs> no, but here's the thing. Uh, Hold on, I do want to see how tiny of a surgery you can perform on your little son's penis. Would that be okay? Oh, hold on. This, I, w I just want to see how teeny tiny of a surgery I can do on the tippy top of your little son's penis. Can I do it? I did it. Mwah! And then he kissed your dick. And he said, Arrivederci. Enjoy your socially acceptable penis. As I think I'll win. You guys are great. Thank you guys so much. Give it for Joe Anchandra, everybody. And the return of the drivers.